little bit of an introduction. My name is Howard Yu. I'm a solution, uh, senior solutions architect uh, in TechD. And um, we um, enjoy, and RJ is here with us. Um, we are very excited to uh, present you a, a learning lab for a product called NeuroSeq. Um, so basically um, the module, the, the lab and the module is going to be composed of three sections. Um, number one, the first module that we'll be doing um, is going to be um, titled as a NeuroSeq, no code required. It's essentially how do you first onboard yourself into the NeuroSeq environment? How do you set things up to connect the NeuroSeq to the uh, backend knowledge base? In this case, we'll be uh, using Watson Discovery for our um, knowledge base. And also, how do you connect the NeuroSeq with the, the Watson Assistant, the virtual agent? Um, technology so that Watson Assistant can call the NeuroSeq's um, you know, seeking abilities to answer questions um, using the fall-through mechanism that it has. So in the first module, we'll actually be um, introducing NeuroSeq, but also going through the lab to uh, teach people how you can connect and integrate those three pieces together to form a chat, AI, and knowledge experience. Number two module will be after everything is done with the module number one, uh, it's actually time to utilize NeuroSeq. So um, we have a couple of features, um, <laughs> acronym as SCALE, um, because the main theme of the NeuroSeq is to put the human into the loop of the Gen AI with the SCALE. Um, so you'll be um, you know, learning how to do the Seek, explore, curate, um, and, and analyze the logs, um, all those goodies will be discussed on module number two, which is going to take uh, the most time during our uh, learning lab, um, but it should give, uh, give the users uh, a really good understanding of what the basic features are and how the things could work for you to also use and demo to others um, when, uh, when necessary. The last module three, um, is going to involve adding like an AI training resources. Um, basically, we are going to be curating some of the answers and the questions um, that's been collected on the model two, how the users can um, you know, have an ongoing maintenance uh, and the trainings of the uh, NeuroSeq so that uh, when uh, certain questions are coming in, it actually be, has a better quality ongoingly. So those are some of the uh, deeper level because we'll be going through some of the tunings, some of the configuration elements of the NeuroSeq, um, and also the um, downloading and uploading of the, um, you know, the question and answer pairs. A very interesting topic, but um, you know, just to give you a little bit of a heads up, this total lab may actually go over 60 minutes covering the model three. Um, so just, just a word of um, notice is that uh, when the 60 minute mark is done, we'll actually let you know that we'll still be recording the lab. So then you can later uh, check out the remaining section of the model three, or if you have more time and doesn't do not have any of the impending meetings or anything, you can still hang on after 60 minutes and complete the lab with us. However, if you are busy and you have another meeting to jump off, that's fine. Um, but please do check the you know, meeting recording um, that we'll be sharing with all the participants after this, um, because I'm afraid that the model three might actually go over a little bit of a time. Um, but the whole expectation is that all the labs should be done within the 60 minutes of the time frame. Okay. Well, anyway, it all those um, those uh, please keep asking questions um, through the through the chat window. I, I'm not going to be interrupted by the questions and answers, but we'll be st stopping or pausing momentarily between models, and then we'll be checking the questions and if with you know selectively a couple of them could be answered. Um, RJ and Joy is actually participating in the lab as well. So as they go along, they'll also try their best to answer the questions that appears in the chat window. Okay, with all that said, um, let's go forward with the model number one. So entry level model number one is a NeuroSeq no code required. Um, you could follow along with the documentation that Joy has shared, but I'm just going to go over um, of how the lab is going to be um, to be processed. 
Um, so the first part is actually getting the neural seek. And um, if you are IBM -er or the IBM partners, um, you probably have a IBM Cloud account. Um, so let's start by logging into um, the IBM Cloud. So I'll be entering the password. This is a typical way for you, um, everybody, to log in. And um, we'll be shopping for NeuroSeq. So on the dashboard, on the top menu, there's actually a catalog where you can browse through the IBM Cloud catalog. Um, searching for NeuroSeq is pretty easy. Just enter NeuroSeq in the catalog search window, and you will actually see the NeuroSeq uh, on the search result. So um, just select this, and then um, you can actually go ahead and select the uh, default location in Dallas. But as for the plan, um, we are actually going to be using a, a light plan here. So um, just like the documentation is suggesting, please go ahead and select the light plan, which is free. For the pre-sales purposes, uh, this can be used. Um, so I'm expecting everybody to be able to um, provision their own instance of the neuroseek. So check, I have read and agreed to the following third-party terms. Great. Um, you could further modify the names before you click the create button. Um, I usually do, for example, like a learning lab, just to make sure that the instance that I'm creating is easily identifiable. Right? So I'll just kind of change the name and click create. And then within a, um, a few seconds, uh, neural C instance will be available. And this would be um, what you'll probably get right now looking at this. Um, you could launch the neural C right now, which is what I'm going to do. So, uh, everybody, if you guys are ready, click the launch neural C to see the first screen of the neural C uh, in, in play. Okay, great. So not really that hard, right? Um, just to just remember that, you know, NeuroSeq can be searched in the catalog, search for the NeuroSeq, select the plan. In this case, it's a, it's a um, light plan. Um, and um, the assumption is that, and I, we believe that all the IBMers um, should have access to the IBM Cloud uh, if they use their IBM ID and uh, password. Uh, it, it kind of, it's hooked up with a single sign-on on the IBM. So, um, if you do have a IBM, you know, ID and password, you'll be able to access those. Now let's um, kind of begin to set up the first section uh, in the basics. So um, the NeuroSeq requires you to enter um, like company names, for example. So we'll actually go ahead and enter the, um, you know, it can be anything. It doesn't really have to be exactly the same as the lab document suggests. Um, but, and then, you know, it can be created, but uh, just make sure to enter the, you know, company name here. And then um, just leave the default language as an English. And we'll actually go ahead and select the external as the usage for the neural seek. Uh, internal and external, um, the, the minor differences is that if things are internal, the um, neural seek will actually be much, um, much more liberal in case. Um, external facing uh, needs to be more, much more stringent in terms of PII and the um, information handling. So that should be the only difference here. So click next, um, that's on the right bottom section. And then the next part is setting yourself with the um, knowledge sources. So the knowledge sources, um, NeuroC actually requires a knowledge source to be connected. So we just provision the NeuroSeq. And what we are kind of doing is, is that we are letting the NeuroSeq know that, hey, these are the, this is the, uh, the source of the knowledge that you should be um, you know, searching and getting the, uh, the ground truth or the raw facts that the generation of the answers will be based on. Without these knowledge sources, um, the NeuroSeq is just similar to a, a foundational model or the, any generative AI large language models. It, it, it is not going to be um, so much useful for the you know, corporate corporate usages. The um, so this is a mandatory step where you need to set up like um, you know backend knowledge source. The knowledge source that, that we'll be using is the Watson Discovery, and we already have a the Watson Discovery system available for the usage of the lab. So I'm just gonna share that information right now. 
connecting to the Watson discovery will involve requiring like a three pieces of information. One is the URL, the other is the API key and the project ID of the discovery. So I'll be posting um, or um, RJ, if you could, you could post it into the chat window. Yep, I see that he's already done it, but please take a look and check the chat window. There should be these informations available. Um, the service URL, the API key and the project ID. Um, we can easily copy and paste this information into the setup screen of the NeuroSeq. So jump back, jumping back into the NeuroSeq. I'm just gonna paste the URL and the API key and the project ID, which will have a bunch of documentations for our lab use. Oh, okay. So um, Cesar actually said the chat window is not allowing them to copy those contents. So um, yeah, please, if somebody can post those uh, into the chat window. Oh, no, no, sorry, the Q&A window. Um, that might actually be helpful. All right. Well, just to give you an information of what the knowledge sources uh, is, um, this is a knowledge source that we use in this year's Tech Exchange. It's basically a web crawled resources or a bunch of web pages um, coming from the IBM website in the IBM Analytics uh, web web page. So, you know, th those contains um, things like you know what the IBM Analytics is, what kind of products are available, um, what what sort of software um, you know. Um, you know, features, <laughs> et cetera, are there. Um, those are the things that they are, we'll be using. Um, you could actually click the um, next button. The testing button is here, but it's not really necessary right now. So we can just click the next button right here. And what happens is that you'll probably see NeuroSeq um, kind of giving its own version of the um, description of the, techno the, the company that you entered in. This may be true or may not be true. This is a generative answer. So, you know, we can review and if the things are not correct, can correct it. I'm not gonna be correcting it because it looks pretty, pretty decent as an answer. So I know that the neuroseq is actually working. Um, we're gonna go over to um, making sure that the Watson Assistant Action is in place and um, the links are enabled. So embed links into the return responses, meaning that any passages that the, the, the generation is based on on a particular website or web pages, they will be embedded with the links. So you'll be able to see and click and um, get to the actual um, the documentation, the website docs that the answer was generated from. So we're going to be enable that. Disabling with, you know, it's not going to produce any links, but for the lab, we'll do that. And then for the uh, answers, you have two choices. Um, we'll be actually much more verbose uh, because this is more fun. Um, you could actually have a more stricter answers, just you know, make a short answer um, um, based on the facts only. But this we'll, we'll actually going to be choosing like uh, you know important phrases are surrounded by many lines of text, explain them. Um, and then um, I'll be choosing the. Um, we have lots of oral documentation, blog posts, some of them conflict informations. So um, the NeuroSeq is uh, able to understand and prioritize the date um, a little more. So this is simply going to be configuring uh, certain things like, hey, I want the, you know, the date checking put into to place so that if there's the same information coming from the same uh, different websites, then uh, a more recent date version will actually win over. So that said, uh, after you enter everything, um, then NeuroC is ready to answer. So this um, part actually concludes the uh, the first section of um, making sure the NeuroC is connected, connecting to the um, documentation. So we are actually this phase, uh, this phase right now. Okay, so anyway, um, let's go into connecting the NeuroSeq with the um, IBM Watson Assistant, um, which is going to be providing the, you know, the chat or virtual agent experience to the users. Um, we do have an, our own UI to perform Seek. However, uh, it is actually much more useful for any general audiences to just simply ask question 
or ask a natural language questions to neural seek without having to worry about the interfaces or how to use the tool and etc. So this step is uh, one really great way to utilize neural seek in many different um, many different user facing situations. So let's go back to neural seek, and in here you actually probably see um, next steps here, and one of them is to integrate it with your virtual agent, right? So hey, you know, um, why don't I jump over to the integration? And the first thing that of setting the Watson Assistant before we do anything is first getting the Watson Assistant, right? So let's go back to the cloud, um, the IBM cloud, and then uh, do a pretty much similar thing. Uh, go to the catalog and then search for Watson Assistant. So there we go. And um, very similarly, um, there is actually a, I believe there is actually a um, light version um, of the Watson Assistant here that we're gonna choose. Yeah, it's gonna, it, it's actually chosen here <laughs> by default. So it's a kind of a free freemium version. Um, so this is actually a really nice way to um, run the, um, the, you know, the integration between the Watson Assistant and Neurosync. So I'll be checking this. And just like very similarly, um, I can also set this up so that it's going to be um, marked as a learning lab, right? A Watson Assistant learning lab. Uh, and then click the create. And then in a couple of seconds, um, very similarly of how you got the NeuroSeq, um, the Watson, uh, the IBM Cloud is going to be giving you a launch page here. And it has the API keys, which are, we, we're not going to be using, but let's try, uh, go ahead and launch the Watson Assistant. So this is the first initial screen of the Watson Assistant. Um, uh, first, you need to enter um, the name of the assistant. So just like what's depicted in the documentation, we'll enter um, IBM Learning Lab. We'll seek uh, with Watson. It can be anything. Um, and you don't really have to like put on descriptions or anything like that, but you know, if you want to, you can do it like, you know, for learning lab purpose, right? And then click next. The next will be to personalize the um, assistant. Um, just just make sure that, you know, well, it can be anything. Uh, it doesn't really affect our, our usages here. So I'm just gonna set that, I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's gonna be default to the web if you're not sure. Uh, and then uh, for the choosers, not available. I'm a student. Um, set with the others. Um, enter your uh, role here, student. And which statement discloses your best needs? Um, I'm not sure at this moment. It doesn't really affect anything uh, related to the lab. So you know, do your best to set set things up. And then, um, but I we, I would really suggest you to just follow along the documentation and click next. Next would be to um, custom, kind of customize your, um, you know, assistant look and feel. So this is will be the pop up. You know, you don't really need to do uh, much things here. If you can, you can customize the colors. But we were just gonna go ahead and click next, and um, we have completed the creating the Watson assistant. Oh no, sorry. There's another final um, button where you'll be able, you know, you'll be asked to create by uh, cl clicking the create button. Yeah, congratulations. You just got your first um, Watson Assistant um, created for you. Hey. So anyway, um, so now the Watson Assistant is ready um, to be connected with the NeuroSeq. So let's go back to the NeuroSeq um, and under the integration page, let's kind of take a look at the custom extensions and how it should be work, uh, how it should work with the Watson Assistant here. First, um, you want to go into the Watson Assistance integration page. 
that is located on the left pane of the menu. So here, home actions preview, you see the integrations. Watson Assistant is actually a really nice tool, um, like virtual agent technology, because it makes it really easy for you to call or invoke any uh, external application services using what's called the custom extensions. So scrolling down, you'll see there's a build custom extensions button. Um, you will click this and then get into the wizard, right? And then you'll click the next. And then at the name part of it, um, you know, you could, you know, basically you can name any of the extensions here. Um, um, like, you know, IBM Learning Lab, NeuroSeq with Watson. Um, so I'm just going to use that. Learning Lab. Seek with Watson, right? And then here you could actually have like a description of for Learning Lab and then click next. And now this is part where you'll be dropping the open API JSON file. So the open API is a um, kind of an, an open standard for describing like a REST API or external API calls. So you need that in order to um, create the, your custom extensions. Fortunately, the custom extension part of the NeuroSeq does provide that. So you could actually download this custom extension open API file. Which is which is what I just did. So it's it should be stored in your download folder um, or whatever folder that you specify as the download locations. Um, it's a JSON file, and it's the file name is neuroseq.json. So please look for that. And uh, once you got it, um, we can actually go back to the um, the integration page here, and then click the drag and drop files here to upload. Uh, I'm just gonna go to my upload it into the custom extension form, click next. And the open um, API JSON file should have all the endpoints of the NeuroSeq uh, REST API um, registered here. So great, I'm gonna finish it. And then I'm gonna go and check that the, um, now I have a, a NeuroSeq um, that I can add it here as uh, what, uh, as a part of the extensions here. Yeah, there we go. So NeuroC is here. Great, awesome. However, we are not really finished yet. Um, oh, sure, sorry, sorry. No, it's not here. <laughs> I was a little bit confused. I'm very sorry. Um, the, the IBM Learning Lab NeuroC, the extension that we added is actually right here right at the top. So here, um, rest of the instruction is saying that I need to enter the API key for the authentication to work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the NeuroC UI, copy the URL, uh, copy the API key, sorry, go back to the IBM Assistant and add those API key here. So I'm gonna click the add button. That's on the right bottom of my tile. And then here, I'll go to next. And then on the authentication part, I'm just going to say API key auth and paste the API key that I just click next and then finish it. Right. So this is a step complete. Now I do have an open here, but the custom extension is now in place in the IBM Assist, like Watson Assistant. And I can start using the custom extensions um, to um, perform, you know, the seeks using it. So how do I do that? Um, there is actually an easy way to do it because we also supply the uh, template um, that you could use to quickly set up um, an action uh, in Watson Assistant. So here, I'm gonna go into the action part on my left menu. And it's gonna be asking me to create an action, right? So I'm gonna click that. And there's a choice between start from the scratch and quick start with templates. Everybody select the quick start with the templates. And when I click the quick start with the templates, I do see um, uh, you know, the number of the things that I could you know, quickly use to uh, create a template. And there's a NeuroSeq version of it. So here, 
there's a thing called the NeuroSeq starter kit. All the templates names are, you know, alphabetically ordered. So just find it where the N is and then just click it. And when you select the templates, this is a starter kit. There's a button called the add templates at the bottom. So add the templates and you'll be able to create your very first Watson Assistant action um, using um, that is going to be invoking the NeuroSeq search. And um, what the I, a Watson Assistant action is that it's a, a function. It's a small task that a chatbot or the virtual agent can perform. Um, you usually perform this through the dialogues or through your uh, other actions um, as necessary. Uh, so NeuroSeq search is actually one of them right now. Okay. You might have noticed that the status is like um, kind of a red here, meaning that it's not really um, completely working at this moment. And that's because we need to do uh, one last step of hooking this with the extension that we created. So when we click the action and go into its definitions, you see there are several steps. And one of the steps is colored red, meaning that um, the data is actually missing. One of the data is missing right here. And what kind of data is missing? Let, let us click it. There is no extension um, that is set up by default to be called. Before we go into setting it up with our extension, um, there's one more thing that we need to do. We need to actually delete this query context, which is pre-populated, but um, we're going to be deleting it. And the reason why is that the Watson assistants will accumulate um, a large portion of the data in its context. And every time th there's a new information in the context, it's going to be keep sending into the neural seek. And eventually, um, the REST API will you know, start rejecting those data because the data size is just too large. So we're not going to be doing that. And the context is not useful at this moment. So we're going to be deleting um, those um, context sections and also jumping into the extension here. So here at the bottom, uh, click the edit extension. And then there is a not notice that it's missing an extension. So, hey, you know, we will be adding this IBM Learning Lab NeuroSeq with Watson as the missing extension. And then when we set this up, it's going to ask for, hey, you know, what is the, um, you know, the, uh, the thing that you want to do with this extension? Uh, we want to run the seek on answer from NeuroSeq what is your question or what is your you know variable that the question is coming from? We're simply gonna say it's a session variables. So just click the two here. It's gonna uh, appear, this, uh, it's gonna have a pull down menu of all the variables available. We'll be selecting the session variables and then we'll select a, um, a session variable called a query text. And this query text is pre-configured when you are adding this action so that any user input is actually assigned as a query text. So we are just using um, the, the, uh, the user input that has been entered when it's calling this action as an input, which is going to be the question. So the question to the query text and uh, click apply. And that's pretty much um, it for setting it up um, because now we see you know the um, this uh, the red section is now gone because you know we now have a proper extension in place. So why don't we click the save button on the top right to save all the changes that we made, and then close this button. So now we have the single action. Um, the the status has turned now into the you know the green, and then we are able to be using the neural seek as part of the action inside of Watson Assistant. However, this action is not automatically getting triggered because in order for this to be triggered, we have to like, for example, create a dialogue or create a fallback, all the things. Um, you could actually do that. But in this case, we'll actually um, have a, a very short, shorter version of the, um, the, the way to do it. Um, it's just by going into the set by assistant. And there's al already a pre-populated list of the fallback mechanisms in the, within the Watson assistant as well. So in this case, um, what we're going to do is uh, we'll be calling that action NeuroSeq search when the no action matches are found, right? So here, 
great customer, trigger war detected, et cetera, uh, will be actually going into the no action matches. And um, these are pre-populated um, lists of the actions that needs to be done. So this one actually checks where the no ma match action is repeated three times. And then the, the, the default activity is that it's going to go into a human agent or fall back into the sub action. But rather than just falling back into the sub actions, we're gonna um, delete, the, delete these. So there's a delete button at the bottom. So just go ahead and delete it, right? And then here, uh, instead of deleting it, um, we'll be deleting the conditions here. So no action matches for three or more times. Uh, we're gonna delete that. And then also, um, okay, so before we kind of go further, um, Let's just save it and just check whether this fallback mechanism actually works by clicking the preview. Uh, Watson SS is pretty useful because it gives you a quick preview functions of you know what to do with it. So here, um, why don't we ask something really bizarre that no intention is gonna ever pick it up? Like why is the sky blue? Yeah, so you can see that. I'm afraid I don't understand, please rephrase your question. The same phrase of the assistant saying is appearing here. So what it means that the um, when I'm asking this question, this is actually going through uh, falling into the no action matches category. So this is great. So now um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this. And then instead of um, you know just responding this way, um, I'm gonna define a, um, a custom behavior of the action, right? by selecting a go to the sub action section here, right? So in the bottom section, and then rather than just ending the action with some words, I'm gonna go here and then go to the sub action. And then in the sub action sections, I'm gonna uh, select the neuroseq search, right? And then also check the end this action after the action is completed, because we are gonna be you know, wrapping up the action here. So what, what it means is that when there's no action or intentions discovered as a fallback mechanisms, uh, I'm gonna just ask the same question, relay that into the neuroseq search, and then possibly get an answer from it. So apply it, and then we are good to go. So we'll save this, and then you'll see um, skills up to date. And why don't we ask the same questions like, why is the sky blue? And what happens is that the neuroseq search is actually going, um, being executed in the background. Um, and then it's gonna be calling the neuroseq API using its custom extensions. And then it's gonna give, give us back with the answer, which is, I'm not an expert in this, but the sky appears blue because of the phenomenon called uh, relay scattering, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this is the answer that is actually being generated by the neuroseq um, on the uh, why is the sky blue. And then uh, what, 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 this can be done is since we've been hooking up this into the knowledge source of the IBM uh, analytics, even though this didn't really find why is the sky blue on the you know corporate you know knowledge source, um, that's why it's saying that, like I'm not an expert in this. It is actually able to generate the answer because the generative AI is a foundational model. It knows a lot of different things. So this is what happens, and this you know kind of verifies that everything is working fine. So this this kind of concludes the first like a uh, module one um right before we jump into it let's summarize so we just went into um, pro provisioning the neuroseq from the ibm cloud and we also set up the neuroseq to work with the knowledge source which is the ibm analytics website and then lastly uh, we quickly find you know kind of a learn how to get the integrations um, going um, through the neuroseq integration tab um, we are able to derive the, um, download the um, Neuroseq JSON API, um, provision the Watson Assistant, uh, created the custom extensions using the Open API JSON, um, and then uh, use the uh, action templates that's being uh, provided to quickly create an action that can actually be invoked during the, um, the chat, you know, bot sessions, and uh, get the answers back. So. Um, this is the completion of the module number one, where everything is ready for you to jump over to the model number two.
Okay, um, momentarily pause before we go into the you know model number two, but um, and let me just quickly check if there are any question and answers. Uh, okay, I think our team is trying their best to answer as much as they can, so um, good. Um, there's no um, active questions or anything that's uh, that's urgent. Then, um, with the interest of the time, we are already like. 39 um, and 39 minutes in. So why don't we just quickly jump into the model number two. So interme intermediate um, neural seek innovation features. Uh, there are a couple of features that we wanna really showcase during this lab. Uh, we won't be able to showcase all the features uh, because they're you know, kind of uh, quite a number of them, but um, we wanna kind of emphasize these uh, five different features um, uh, within this module number two, which are number one, the seek, uh, which we just saw, uh, the seeking and answer generating ability, the curate ability so that the, the human users can actually, you know, kind of take a look, analyze and modify as necessary for some of the answers being generated. Analytics to keep track of the trends of the semantic matching scores, the confidence levels, and what are the popular, most popular um, questions being asked? How is it being answered by neural seeking, et cetera? Locks to store all those um, communications or conversations going back and forth between the, you know, the systems or the users. And then lastly, a very cool explore feature, which is going to you know, kind of turbocharge the seek result and make it really useful on many of the generative AI works that we could um, you know, do with it. So, those are the five main things that um, the model two is going to cover. Okay, so uh, let's kind of cover the seek um, right now. Going back to the uh, Watson assistant, um, rather than just asking why is the sky blue on our you know <laughs> a pre um, preview um, chat here, um, why don't we ask more interesting questions like what is IBM uh, Analytics? So I'll be asking. What is IBM Analytics? And when we ask that, obviously the neural seek is going to go into the knowledge source. I'm sure that it's going to find like a couple of websites related to the IBM Analytics, and it's going to combine the answers and then generate the uh, response like this. Since we actually signed up or configured the answers to be embedding a, a certain sources, these are the um, the the URLs where it found the answers here. Right, you can see that the answer is being working. However, uh, in the background, um, go into the seek and sort of answer the same questions here. Okay, analytics internally when the IBM analytics running, right? This is what the analytics is producing as, a, as an answer, but notice how colorful it is. Uh, what I mean by the colorful is that we have a prominence mode turned on on our seek. So in here, we could actually see the full sentences and couple of the links, but in order, in order to understand what is actually happening uh, when the Gen AI is generating from the knowledge source, we also make, need to make sure which part of it is actually originating from, right? So the prominence actually gives you a colorization of the relevant facts found within your documentation. Different colors mean different sources. So the more colorful it is, the more fragmented the, not, uh, the information or the answer um, is. And it means that the generative AI is actually combining many different source informations to come up with the answer. And in here, if you kind of scroll down, you will be able to see the semantic matching scores the coverage stores or the confidence of the knowledge. Um, however, the list of the documentation that these answers were coming from. So you see the database, capabilities, some of the tech now, October, cloud pack for data, the products, resources. So in, you know, in many cases, you actually notice that um, the knowledge or the answer coming from are actually not based on a single page. And this is what the seek um, is kind of be able to tell you um, exactly where th these individual you know, snippets are actually coming from. So the, the pinkish color is actually coming from uh, this part of documentation. Um, there are a um, couple of you know, snippets here, uh, not really much here. 
even though this actually had a 100% hit. Uh, I'm sure that the knowledge base actually got the analytics out and came up with the uh, high confidence documentations, but notice how um, some, sometimes it's really different from how the generative AI kind of works to combine these things into an answer. And as you can see, NeuroSeq actually does shine a light into this world where, you know, um, you know, you do have a, a pretty good a way of noticing how much of it is actually being created and how much of it actually being stitched together from your documentation website. And here the symmetric matching score is 22%, meaning that uh, it's not really that high. So even the answer has a lot of the prominence and coverages to it. The answer has many jumps between source articles, meaning that it's, it has a lot of stitches. Uh, which lower the overall score. Source jumping may indicate the meaning and intent of the source article are not carrying through the through the answer because um, this particular you know answer is actually not coming from a single website page, right? Thirteen sources um, and the IBM Analytics back up the reference, uh, decrease the final score significant. So you know there we go with the difference between um, the Watson discovery was able to have a pre high confidence pre large coverage on many multiple documentations, but those are those doesn't really mean, actually mean that they will be useful when you are presenting to the users. Um, however, with the NeuroSeq, you can actually generate a much more compelling answers, uh, much more with the complete information um, with the set of the documentation is getting generated, but um, as you can see, the semantic matching score is still not high enough. And what that means is that you, you might need to modify the documentations or you might need to um, do a a better trade job in order to um, make this process much more efficient. Great. So uh, now we do know the same question that you were answering uh, is looking like this. Let us jump over to the curate tab and see the list of the questions that are being answered. Right. So as you can see, there were a couple of questions being asked here. And then one of them was the sky blue, where this was um, our first ever question. That we an, uh, asked, and uh, you know, this is this is the answer um, that the generative AI kind of generated, or the large language model. But as you can see, all the questions that is going back and forth between the users and the NeuroSeq are, you know, pretty much kept in record. And you can see the coverage is very low because the sky, blue sky, was not really appearing anywhere on the IBM website, and also the confidence score is actually near zero because these are not based on the facts that were found in the knowledge sources. However, uh, certain things like IBM Analytics, the coverage score is really high, 100%, meaning that um, you know, NeuroC was able to find the documentation that matched the description of the keywords that were found in the question. However, still, the semantic matching score is not high enough. It's like 27%, 22%, because of the fact that, um, you know, the seek, that what we saw in the seek um, had a lot of stitches of the answers came from multiple sources. And then there were some key keywords missing here and there, right? So uh, a great way to kind of see and understand um, the answers and um, you know, give, give people a nice really uh, judgment in terms of um, you know, like whether they could uh, so, uh, you know, trust this answer or not, right? Okay, so we actually went through the seek and the, um, the curate. There are a couple of things that you could do with the curate. Uh, one of the things is you can actually edit the answer, right? So in here, in the sky is blue, even though this is a really nice answer and I love it, um, maybe I may need to just modify it so that, for example, I might just edit the whole thing by saying um, this question, um, you know, well, sky is blue. Um, but I mean, it's great. I don't know, this, I just made it anyway. Um, and what happens is that this becomes what's called the edited answer. Uh, it's part of the curate processes where if you have certain answers um, that you really want to modify or remove a couple of words or maybe do a whole totally different wording, you can manually intervene and modify the um, the you know, the answers, uh, obviously. So next time when the same answer is being asked, why is the sky blue? It's gonna go and choose, um, well, uh, yeah. So 
it's going to actually go and choose the um, the answers that sit it uh, sit it for this one here, right? Right. Um, well, it actually did generate the answer, but uh, what happens is that because of the caching, it's actually doing so. So I'm just gonna a couple of times like uh, removing um, and going back and asking it again. It's probably going to say, uh, well, sorry. Yeah, it's actually not liking the create the answer here, but it's probably going to be sticking with the edited answer here. Um, Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. So I have to acknowledge that this is correct. <laughs> and what happens is that this answer is going to be um, cached and used the next time uh, you ask this. And this is one uh, thing that you can you know, start curating uh, and fixing the process here. Right now, the, co the cache configuration is turned on, but it's set as number three, meaning that um, unless the answer goes more than number three, uh, it's, it's not going to honor that. So that, that probably would be the reason why this is happening. Okay. But uh, your lab will have a certain use cases to um, be able to manually correct the AI responses here and save um, that I'm doing right, here, right now. Lastly, uh, I'm going to go over the analytics here. And I'll be... I'm going to be skipping a couple of things because uh, of the time limitations, but you know, please go through. Um, there are a couple of additional things that's mentioned in the documentation of curating it. Uh, I was only showing like one example of how you can you know modify and edit answers, but there are obviously many more things that you can create. For example, merge the similar looking questions together, delete the questions, or add answers, uh, add questions, and things like that. So here is a brief description of analytics. And unlike the cur curate, the analytics actually gives you a, a last 30 days worth of trends in terms of the coverages. Right now, because we didn't really answer, um, had a question being generated too much, we have only a single day worth of um, the loops. But the idea is that as the conf confidence and the conf uh, coverage rate changes, this will be shown in the loopback period on the days here. So for example, um, I think we've made a couple of modifications to curate. So we might actually see, um, so for example, the IBM analytics, uh, this is a conference is pretty high, but if we kind of change the, um, the, the warning thresholds, this will affect the analytics to have a different uh, coverage scores here. And um, NeuroSeq, keeps track of the last 30 days. So, you know, it, it technically, as you kind of go back back and forth, you will actually see more questions appearing, less questions appearing, um, and then uh, have a different confidence levels of your past versus your present. Okay, lastly, uh, another one is the logs. So the log uh, keeps track of all the questions and the answers for the auditing purposes. So even though the curate, curate actually keeps track of um, the answers here, um, people can actually delete all data or delete all analytics um, and um, kind of nullify all the processes. However, the logs will remain all the questions and will keep um, changes, uh, 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 all the logs messages. And you can use the, um, the API to dump the logs or you know, view the logs or save it um, so that you could keep track of uh, what kind of um, questions and answer are being uh, derived here. And, and this also gives you a um, really nice way to keep track of the sessions or the user sessions that were asking these questions as well. Okay, so we are going through the logs, the module number 2.4. Um, and let's go over to the explore section. So um, we've actually see, seen uh, how the Seek is working. Uh, Seek is essentially uh, you know, when when the user asks questions like why is IBM Analytics, what happens is that the Seek is asking it um, to collect the knowledge base sources, and then it's going to be using a large language model to generate answers from it. And then while it's doing so, it's going to be running like a semantic analytics uh, coverage scores, and then intention uh, detection, PII resolutions, and all those uh, pr processing steps, and then get the answers out. 
However, there is actually a one more really cool features where you could use a result of something that you got out of the either the, the you know knowledge based documentations um, to perform um, additional generation uh, activities. So why don't we just kind of give a, a really the first examples of how you could do this? Okay, so it's like the um, the uh, model two point five uh, explorer is saying. Let's click the writer prospecting email. And then this is giving us the Watson AI, you know, the, the website. So this is called a neuroseq template language. So we have created a language that will, you know, describe um, uh, steps of using the generative AI to perform certain tasks. So in this example, write a prospecting email. Um, you are telling the um, neuroseq to write a marketing email for Watson X based on this list and where this is list is coming from. It's, uh, it's coming from the website, ibm.com products and Watson AI, right? It's actually going through the summarization. So you're summarizing the um, web page into a 1500 character um, tokens. And then as a last step, you are prop prompting the large language model to create a bulleted list of features based on um, the summarization. And then finally you are processing everything together to write a marketing email uh, using the large language model. So these are the uh, very powerful expressions that you could easily formulate without any like coding or any, uh, you know, any skills in, um, in you know, uh, writing codes. And then you can learn, uh, can run it. And what happens is that the, um, this is actually the first part is actually the list that it, uh, it got it from the website. And the second part that's creating here is the email marketing um, email that is basing those lists into a nice marketing introduction. So just by seeing the examples, not only we can seek the answer or seek the answer from the knowledge base, we can actually also use the websites or the uploaded documentations to create various things um, that can be generated using the um, large language models. A very cool feature, and it's sitting right right next to it, so um, it's very useful. Okay, um, you can also click the details here. Um, actually, you can see it. Okay, so here you go. Details here to understand the semantic analytics score of this generation. So it's not really that high. However, we can see the top source coverages. Um, some utterances, um, unattributed terms that he found out. In, uh, so give you a, a little bit of an extra thing in terms of you know how it um, the the how the score came about and what the scores were like. Okay. Let, let us try something else a little bit different. So I'm gonna clear the um, the prompts here, and then now I'm gonna be using a, a knowledge source. Right. So um, I'm going to select the knowledge based documentation. So no, the knowledge based, based documentation is going to be querying my knowledge source, not the website. And I'm going to write, like, for example, um, blog post here, post about IBM Analytics. Right, and here, when I evaluate this, this is going to be querying my knowledge sources and kind of giving me all the kind of building blocks for me to uh, further run the large language model um, settings here. Right, so this is the raw output, but in case, um, well, I can actually summarize this output because this is just too much information. Right, like right? these are all the. Uh, the queries that I got from it. So I can actually summarize it. So by clicking the summarization, um, I'm gonna be summarizing, but with the lesser tokens. So about hundred different tokens here. And then further review it. Right. And then um, I can actually, you know, do, do, do further things like, you know, write a, um, write an overview or introductions, even though this is a really nice kind of a, you know, um, summarization, um, we can actually further do 
um, by like a, you know, write an overview of this and then just add the LMM just to hint that the large language model should be able to create um, an overview of it. Right? So this is how the Explorer kind of, um, you know, the neuronal template language works. Um, you could also upload the documentations. Um, we are not going to be doing that right now, but the supported documentations are like a PDF files, text files, or the HTML files. Um, any texture information can be uploaded. And then you can actually perform the same thing um, using that as well. So, yep. Um, okay, so um, this is the finish of the module two. Um, I Unfortunately, we are at the top of the hour. It's 2 p.m. Um, on Central Time. Uh, but however, just wanted to kind of give you an overview about the innovation features of the um, the neural seek after we were done with the integrations. The seek to seek the answer from the knowledge base with the semantic analytics and the coverage scores. We did go to the create tab where you could download, upload, modify, but also um, you know, edit the answers. Uh, if there's something that you don't like, right, you can control the behavior of the, um, the generations. Uh, also the analytics to see the trend of the uh, semantic scores or the coverages or the intentions um, between the last 30 days. Logs to keep track of all the communications going back and forth between NeuroSeq and the, the applications. And then lastly, um, a, a pretty cool feature called Explore where using the knowledge that you got from the Seq, um, you can perform uh, some generative tasks like writing an email, writing a statement or summarizing it, um, deriving the keywords out, comparing two documentations, um, and so much more. So this concludes the um, sec second module of the lab. And um, we will be going into the third model. We'll, um, it's gonna kind of cover uh, some of the advanced features like extract, collaborations, and configure. The model number three. Okay, so additional um, training resources. Um, this This is, the part where after you are fully acquainted with NeuroSeq and been using it for a while, how do you kind of continuously maintain and tune, train the NeuroSeq models to um, perform more? Um, and also, what are some of the additional features that the NeuroSeq has uh, in terms of, um, you know, uh, in terms of doing um, a little bit of a, you know, kind of a <laughs> other other works, I would say. Uh, first thing is the extract. So let's go over to the extract first. So extract is available as part of the top menu. And uh, it, its function is very simple. Um, it helps you to extract entities. So for example, um, it, it can answer, uh, receive any text information. So. I can actually test that I would like to buy IBM Analytics and then click Extract. So what it does is that it's actually looking to the, um, the text and then it's deriving the company name, IBM, and the product as the IBM Analytics, right? It has a built-in uh, in entity types of about like a 50 or so. So in many cases, you don't really have to specify your very own entity types. It does a fairly good job to it, but you can also um, search and modify the um, um, the entity type so that it looks different, right? It, it did a really good job here, but let me see if I could do something else. I would like to um, like, you know, buy NeuroSeq, for example. This may not really exist in the IBM website, so probably when I'm actually asking about the NeuroSeq, it's actually saying that it's a music artist because I don't know why. <laughs> Part of the hallucination of the Gen AI um, could be possible. And I, I don't really like that. So in that case, I can actually customize the entity types by adding this as one of the types to define it as a product. So here, I'm just gonna be uh, adding like a you know, product, like software. And then description is like, um, you know, Neuroseq, IBM Analytics, 
or like IBM Cloud, Cloud Pack, um, etc. So when I kind of save this, um, now the new entity definition is actually put in place. So if I kind of ask the same thing as in Outlook by Neuroseq, this will prop properly kind of, a, you know, code it, code it and identify as a software product instead of the music artist. So in this case, um, the extraction feature can be useful to detect certain entities that are specific to certain domains like product names in this case. The uses, use cases for these are very abundant. Um, you can you know, run this um, with the doc and, and extract the entity types and then combine with the other docs that has a similar entity types, but maybe you could de de detect uh, if certain entity types are mentioned or not mentioned. Um, so that you could, you know, kind of notify them to, hey, you know, these terms are missing in this documentation. Why don't you add it? Or these illegal documentations are found in this website. Um, you know, why don't you filter them out? Um, the extract features are very useful in determining whether certain entities exist uh, inside uh, the data or not. Okay. So um, that's the uh, extraction part. Next one is the collaboration tools on Curate. Um, so let's go into the Curate part here. And we've seen like a couple of answers here. Um, what we could do is um, we could actually click the import base Watson Assistant actions here on the top menu to import the Watson Assistant actions. And what I mean is that our Watson Assistant actually has, um, should have, I guess, um, this action here, right? So we will be um, in exporting these out and then putting them as a, a part of the base actions so that the actions can be uh, merged. Uh, let me show you how that is being done. So when you click this, so just make sure that this is really not really that that the visible, highly um, uh, kind of a you know intuitive, but in your actions list, you could actually go to the global settings. That's way down here. And then here, you could have the upload and download tab, which is actually way right side here and kind of hidden. So when you click it, and there's a download section, right? So I'll be downloading these skills inside my download. Uh, and then going back to the NeuroSeq, you can actually import them as a base Watson Assistant Actions. There we go. And then click the IBM Learning Lab, um, which I kind of downloaded, right? And it's actually uploading right now, right? So I can actually merge and download them and then um, upload it into my Actions uh, freely. So I um, actually just did that. And then um, the lab actually goes to filter um, so I can actually perform some sort of, uh, sorry, uh, filtrations and, um, maybe select only the new ones or select the, all that, you know, yeah, select the new ones here. And then, um, these are the selected new ones based on the filter, right? Nothing, nothing too much of it, but, um, I can actually load them as a, um, Q and A, right? So select some of them here, or select all of them, actually, okay. okay. Let me just select all of them. And, um, oops. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go to categorization and open up the load Q&A. Okay. And then, um, No, this is, I'm sorry, this is not, this is not actually the correct instructions, I believe. Um, yeah, first I need to select like a couple of, I'm very sorry, I think the documentation um, may not be correct, but you should actually first download the CSV files of selecting it, not the loaded here, right? So um, the, the first part is, very sorry, after you filter it and import the base model, uh, you should be able to download the CSV file these buttons, these selections are not available unless you select anything, right? But once you select it, like for example here, 
these three questions that I want to create, um, it appears as a, a downloadable options. So I'm just going to download it into my um, local file store here. And if I kind of open this up with the Excel, um, these are the, the items that can be curated. Like you can actually see the list of the questions. What is the IBM analytics and the questions examples, some of the examples, right? The, the score, the answer scores, the KB coverage. So this, why is the sky blue is actually like a zero. Um, and the answers being generated here and then edited whether they are edited or not total ratings and the categories and the intent um, all display on the curate tab so the idea is that um, when you are downloading these created items um, periodically for any um, frequently asked questions um, you can export them into the csp format and then um, send it over to the subject matter experts they can actually take a look at the scores and the answers being generated, and they can modify the scores and upload them again um, as the valid um, actions. So for example, um, I can actually generate like a new, new question and answers here, um, and then reload that into our generated um, answers. Uh, let me just kind of quickly get a, like modify, like for example here. Um, I'm not sure about this, um, not a good question or something. I can save it. Oh, sorry. The, <laughs> the Excel is actually read only here, so I'm not able to save it and merge it, but this is how the process would work, right? And then once the, um, the questions are done, um, I can upload these questions back again into, um, into the view of the neural seek. So here I'm just going to cancel it, but now I can load the Q and A. So can we, in the Q and A, even though this is just exactly the same file, I'm just going to load it here and open it, right? And then I can submit it, and the upload is complete. And any any additional questions or an answers uh, will be actually added up here as an additional things that we want the NeuroSeqs to um, kind of base this answer. So this is a, a quick kind of a walk around on how um, things can be exported and imported into NeuroSeq um, based on their needs. Okay, so lastly, the, the configuration part. Um, let's go over like some of the ways that we could prevent the um, NeuroSeq from um, doing a hallucination here. Go back to seek and let's ask the questions like, what is Watson X's annual revenue of 2020? And I'm not really sure, but you'll probably see, yeah, right, yeah. Documentation does not provide information about Watson X revenue in 2020. And you can actually check that the um, yeah this is this has this much of a semantic match, which means that yeah I mean this is good. So going back to the confidence setting, um, let us just go to the configure and see how the some of the things that we kind of modify in the configure will affect um, these behaviors. So going back to the configure here, you can have an option to show advanced options, but uh, I think yeah. And when you turn on the um, advanced options, the more options are available here. Going to the um, confidence and warning thresholds, select slide the warning confidence right here. Um, and the minimum confidence um, to different values. So I will go to the, um, the warning confidence to 100. and the minimum confidence to 95. Right. And then we'll go and save. And the save is complete, right? And let's go back to the seek. 
and then see how different the answer is going to be. Yeah, and there's nothing in our knowledge base about that. Um, and that's because the confidence score, you know, didn't really make it to the threshold that we set, which is super high. So this is actually uh, one of the ways that we could, you know, based on the semantic matching scores, um, you know, whether we would just simply you know, produce like a warning. So anything above five um, will kind of, uh, anything less than five will actually see like a warning messages of, I'm not really sure about that, but since this was um, actually very set to high, uh, even though the confidence is, could be high, like, you know, 100% here, um, the semantic score or the warning threshold is actually preventing the answer from being generated. Um, so there, uh, this is like one example of how this could, you know, um, make a really strict rule to, uh, this, this is probably going to say like, uh, almost everything that it's not going to be existing on my knowledge basis. So let's be reasonable and go back to the config and go back to the, um, the confidence and warning threshold and then set the reasonable level back to it. Like, I don't know, like nine or something and then minimum confidence should be eh, like five here and then save right so when you go back and then seek it again obviously this is going to have a different result a based on the um confidence level um it it actually does provide the uh answers however it 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 actually doesn't provide uh at the annual revenue in 2022 but um the the way that it kind of warns um is going to be different we can actually play around with it um of asking questions what is ibm analytics and then see how much of the warning thresholds or the um, the warnings that you can provide. Um, so for example, this is a really nice kind of a semantic match score 100. So I, I don't really worry too much about it because it doesn't really hallucinate as much, but uh, for any answers that doesn't really fit the bill, you could modify the semantic scores, um, but also have a far more uh, matching the fine tuning ability to uh, be more fine-tuned in terms of, you know, missing search key penalty, source jumping penalties, you know, total coverage weights, the re-rank min coverage percentages. Um, these are some of the fine-tuning elements where, you know, for example, you could actually penalize more if the source jumping penalties um, are more, much more frequent versus uh, if you do see some missing search terms, you could actually have uh, less penalties or more penalties depending on um, how you want the, um, the the semantic scoring to be done. And then based on that, uh, set, the, 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 set the threshold so that it, uh, it may not or may appear as a search result of the new OC. Okay. So I have saved it. Um, and um, the, I'm not going to go too much deep into it, but um, the, these are the dials, and, uh, dials and the knobs that you can, you know, easily modify configure without having to code anything um, so that you know the better better um, response can be done uh, in terms of seek okay that actually concludes the part number three where um, we've actually seen some of the some of the ways you can kind of modify how the you know the generative AI answering can work um, you could also modify the, uh, as an additional thing, um, like answering generic preferences, whether the answer can be very verbose or very concise, uh, depending on how your usage patterns are. There are many different configuration options, like uh, <laughs> which is going to go over the time very, very frequently. Um, and it's not uh, obviously the scope of this learning lab, but just understand like there are a couple of configuration options that are very critical in terms of um, modifying and or to stop um, certain hallucinations from happening um, from the news. 
Okay. So we actually went over the model number three. Um, just to summarize it, we kind of checked on the extract features of extracting uh, entity types, configuring like a custom, custom entity types, also the collaboration tools of downloading the answers, modifying the answers in the CSV format, and then uploading the answer and merge them um, to maintain a good set of answers in the neural seek. But also lastly, configure like one examples of configurations to modify the warning and the confidence score threshold so that when the results are just too low or just too, um, too untrustworthy, you could actually stop the generative AI from hallucinating as much. So those are the model three. Um, and I'm sure that there are more, much more detailed um, contents around it, but um, it may be um, more information can be found on our documentations or any other subsequent um, trainings that we are really doing in the future. So that concludes <laughs> our learning lab today. Uh, I hope it was informative and useful. Um, we went over the time, apologies to that, but um, we have gotten all the things recorded. So um, I'll kind of stop now and hand it over to uh, Joy. <laughs>